Hey, YouTubers. All right, this is going to be about a different way of how to measure uh, measuring input and output power going into a, uh, a simple pulse motor. The reason I keep showing this simple pulse motor, but this isn't it, I'm about to show it, is that there are so many things really to consider in a simple pulse motor. First, I want to uh, show you this first. This is a simple circuit of just a power supply and a load. A light bulb is a load. And uh, first I want you to be able to understand that whatever current or whatever wattage is coming out of the power supply is the exact same wattage that is flowing through the light bulb. And that the light bulb uh, is, a, uh, is an output. Okay, so I'll hook that up right away. Now, the reason behind showing this, see now, I have two meters set up, one on the negative side, one on the positive. Of course, the currents are exactly the same. Um, so whatever current is coming out of the power supply is the exact same current flowing through the load. And the same thing for the voltage. Whatever voltage is here, it's in parallel with here, and it's the exact same thing. So this is a 100% transfer of energy. Uh, because energy is equal to power times time. Uh, so this is the exact same wattage that's going in that's coming out of the power supply. Now, this, if you can just for a moment visualize that this could give back electrical energy, okay? Say it's spitting out electrical energy, sending it backwards through this meter, okay? Let's say it's giving back half the electrical energy, okay? So this would get knocked down by half. Now, since it's giving back energy, okay, whatever half of 180, I guess, what is that, like 90? Right around 90 million. If this show 90 million, that would mean that there's 180 milliamps coming out and then this is giving back 80, uh, 90 milliamps, knocking this down to 90 milliamps. That would mean that the power supply is actually supplying 90 milliamps, but then you would be getting 183 milliamps worth of light. Now, do you think that is possible? Well, let's test that and let's replace this light bulb with an inductive load such as a coil. So let's do that right now. Okay, so now I've replaced the light bulb load with an inductive load, and that is with this uh, coil in a, well, a simple pulse motor. And I have this meter turned off, and there's only one meter, and this meter is measuring the input current going in only, okay? only the power coming out of the power supply going directly into the circuit and that is it okay and as you can see it's about 100 milliamps of current and it is rotating at let's see about 1395 about 1395 rpms Okay, now, now I want to show you, we're going to, uh, so right now we're just measuring the current only coming out of the power supply. So now we're going to show the current coming back out of the coil only. Okay, so that means we have to uh, switch over. It's going to slow down a little bit. I don't want to destroy our transistors. So now, as you can see, we have this negative current. Now let's get this back up to speed. Let's get it back up to the same 1395.
All right, so that's the same. Now look, it's getting back half the energy. Okay, now this, now when we look at both of them at the same time, the same meter, okay? Let's do that right now. Now we should get 100 minus 50 should be 50, which it is. So now this is the actual power or current that the power supply is actually supplying to the motor. All right, so let's look at this all at the same time. Uh, let's uh, just connect this and then we'll turn that on. All right, now let's look at the input only. Let's change this back to input only. Actually, let me put this over here. Let's back up the speed. All right, now, now as you can see, got 100 milliamps. This meter is measuring only milliamps of current coming out of the power supply only. So what we're observing right here, what you're observing right here is the work being done in uh, uh, to overcoming all the losses in the system, including the resistance of the oil to the loss here. But I want to be able to specifically point out the friction in the bearings is the real work being done here, okay? So if you were to place this out in space, okay, with no resistance, no no air resistance, no bearings, nothing like that, and this would spin forever, for like a couple billion years, okay? And it would require no power whatsoever, okay? But it would be all pure kinetic energy and even though it would be spinning for hundreds of thousands of years, it would be doing actually absolutely no work at all. So these bearings are very good bearings, okay? But the friction is uh, very small. So what you're actually looking at right here is the friction of the bearings and uh, maybe a little bit of air resistance and anything that acts and the work and slow down the rotor and to decelerate is work being taken out. Now, I know this is a little unorthodox and not a lot of people are going to agree with this, but I consider this input as output because the rotor is external to the system. So, so this is the magnetic field is amplified, okay? Because what we're looking at right here, this is the actual energy. Okay, let's say this is a perfect system with no losses at all, okay, in a perfect world, a lossless system. Then this energy right here, all 100% of the energy is actually stored in the magnetic field during the on time. And this is simply just reacting off that magnetic field and the 1395 rpms is in proportion is in a, a direct relationship with what we're observing right here and the work being done to overcome the friction that the bearings present to the rotor to constantly slow it down so this is the power of the work done to compensate for, for the friction of uh, of the bearings and to re-accelerate it back up in order to keep it going. So this is the resistance that's doing, the friction in the bearings is the real work uh, that we're measuring right here. That's what this is, okay? And so this is the energy stored in the magnetic field and this is just the rotor reacting off of that, which is in direct relationship with 1395 RPMs. Now this over here is the energy. This meter is measuring the power coming out of the power supply, which is 100. 
and the energy coming back out of the coil from the shutoff time cycle uh, of the magnetic field when it collapses and returns energy back to the same meter measuring the power coming out. Power going back in, it's half the energy, drops it down by half, 50, okay? So now the actual power consumption that the power supply is using is 50, okay? Yet, we're spinning the motor at 100. And so this is how I'm describing the magnetic field is being amplified. So the magnetic field and the rotor RPMs uh, are both um, greater than the energy that's actually being consumed. So in my eyes, the extra energy, the over unity is actually contained in the magnetic field and the rotor. Now we don't need a generator take energy out of the system and try to convert it back to electrical because we all know what that's going to do. That's going to slow it down. It's going to affect the input current. But it's already being loaded down externally as external work through the friction of the bearings and a little bit of the air resistance. That's the work being done and it's in direct relationship with this. Because this is all the energy stored in the magnetic field during the on time. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so this is the actual consumption right here, 50 milliamps. So really, 50 milliamps, we're getting 100 milliamps worth of magnetic field and RPMs on the rotor. That's 1395. So. If we were to actually knock this down to 50 milliamps, then this rotor should be spinning like roughly half of that at about 500 RPMs. But no, instead, we're getting the same 1395. We're getting the same RPMs that's worth this much, but we're actually only using this much. And so this is how the magnetic field is amplified. And the rotor is reacting off of that. Now look, to show that we are actually getting external work done already in the friction of the bearings. Let's slow this down. Stop it. So now it's self oscillating. And as you can see, we're still getting roughly the same thing happening without the rotor. We don't need the rotor. So this shows that the rotor is external to the system and that the over unity is actually contained in the magnetic field. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna say, okay, and rightfully so, because uh, of the thinking, the usual thinking is that the magnetic field that's being produced isn't doing real work. But it is doing real work because the work is kinetic because there it is. This is kinetic energy. That's power. And the power is equal, exactly equal to the energy because energy is equal to power times time. So this, this is the work being done because it's coming out. It's going from point A and transferring energy from point A to point B and then storing that energy. Now, that's a very practical thing to do. Let's say you're moving and, and you're moving to another city and you gotta store all your, your clothes and, and things and furniture. You gotta transfer all that stuff from your house to a storage uh, facility. And then you have to store it. And that takes work to move it from point A to point B. And then to store it is a very practical thing to do. The magnetic field that's storing practically all this energy right here, okay? This inductor or electromagnet has the job of creating a magnetic field. So this is a very practical thing to do. And so the rotor then reacts. It doesn't consume really, 
because look, it's not consuming anything. So this is an extra added thing going on. And the work done, reacting off this stored energy, just, just that, is in the friction of the bearings. So this is external work being done. We don't have to get a generator coil. That's pointless. You won't get anywhere. The stick generator coil over here, you try to convert that back to electrical. This is to show that the mechanical energy, it's in the form of mechanical energy from the friction of the bearings working against the rotor to slow it down and take work out of the rotor. It's already doing that. And this is just to, 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 to uh, replace what is lost in that friction. Okay, and this at the same time is the exact same energy or close to it at least stored in the magnetic field, which is then of course is transferred into the friction of the bearings to overcome it and to compensate it. So this this is external work being done that we're measuring right here. Okay, but in reality, this is the power we're consuming. So this is not equal to that, obviously. This is more equal to this and this. So the work being done here and the energy stored in this magnetic field is exactly equal to this, but this is all we're really putting into it. Now, wouldn't this make the magnetic field amplified and whatever is happening here and the work done off that magnetic field amplified as well? greater than that <clears throat> because this is the actual consumption that the power supply is actually consuming and using so if you have any I know this is like unorthodox to consider that this input is actually an output because of this only this, that's the reasoning behind my thinking on that is because this is actually external this is external work being done so considering this input as an output that output is greater than the actual consumption that it's using and that magnifies everything going on over here so if you have any comments on that or any input to put in with those thoughts uh, unorthodox thoughts please leave those down below in the comments section and uh if you want to share this to get others uh, take on the perspective of this way of measuring then please do that and uh, that's about it so if you're new to the channel please subscribe and uh, thanks for watching and uh, please uh, please put that in your pipe and uh, puff on that for a while and uh, contemplate what I'm saying here okay and uh, See you on the next video.